weed control. In commercial soybean production, application of baseline herbicide is recommended. Spray immediately after sowing of seeds or spray herbicides within three days of sowing seeds or it may damage your soybean crop. Use of herbicide helps in controlling the early growth of weed as well as emerging weeds in the crop. Carry out manual weeding at regular intervals of 10 to 15 days. Weeding can be done manually for a small farm. However, application of herbicides should be applied on a commercial scale. It should be carried out once or twice before the plants fully mature. It is important that you remove weak crops so that other crops can grow well. This is called thinning and it can be done when the plants are about two to five weeks of age. The best way of controlling uh, weed is by using pre-emergence herbicides. There are a lot of pre-emergence herbicides that are selected for soybean. We have dual gold, a syngenta uh, chemical that is excellent for soybean. You, if you use dual gold in your soybean at planting, it can be able to control weed for up to like one and a half months. And by that time, your soybean must have formed canopy because you apply fertilizer also on time. Then it will produce shades that will make weed not to grow in your field again. Or you can use pendemetalin. But in case maybe you prepare your land maybe like one or two weeks before you come in for planting, you can mix paraquat or any of the post-emergence herbicide with the pre-emergence herbicide and spray so that the paracot or the other the post-emergence herbicide will kill the weeds that have emerged then the pre-emergence will take care of them image the weed seeds you can also use a post-emergence herbicide in case maybe you fail to, pre to spray with pre-emergence herbicide at planting you can also use a post-emergence herbicide to control weed in your soybeans. There are a lot of them available in the market that are selective for soybeans that can kill every other weed but nothing will happen to your soybean. Diseases of soybeans. To get rid of pathogen attacks in soybean cultivation, intercropping or crop rotation is encouraged. Intercropping with maize is good and fetches more returns. For intercropping with maize, plant maize keeping rows at 90 to 100 cm and 10 cm apart from each other. Plant 3 to 4 rows of soya beans in between maize rows. Always visit your farm. Check if you observe maybe white fly in, on your plant. You go to the farm and you touch it and you observe that maybe there is white fly. You quickly spray your soybean with insecticide. Soya bean seedling disease guide. In soya bean farming, seed and seedling diseases of bean is a common and notable problem. This problem reduces the plant population and possible yields. It is advised that replanting is carried out. Soya bean is attacked by so many diseases ranging from fungi, bacteria, and viruses. The common fungi diseases that attack soya bean is like Fusarium. Secospora leaf spot and others. Then soybean has rust diseases that attack the leaves. You see the leaves will turn brownish in color and it will look as if it is dry. Oh, you see the leaves of your soybean squeezing with white patches that is virus. Once you see all those things, then you need to spray with an insecticide because most of these things is, are then being caused by insecticides. And for the fungi, you look for a resistant variety. If you cannot have it, then you dress your seed with fungicide. The apron star is one of the fungicides that is commonly available in the market. There are a lot of fungicides. Bacteria and weed diseases are common among the bean family. This often occurs just before or during the ripening of the crop. Fungicides are recommended. Diseases in Africa include rust, red leaf blotch, frog eye leaf spots, bacteria blights, and soya bean mosaic virus. Soya bean rust caused by a fungi 
affects and destroys the leaves on the plants and can cause up to 60% yield loss. This is widespread throughout many parts of the world and is considered the most destructive of soybean foliar diseases. Other problems include pot shattering that reduces seed longevity, production and distribution difficulties. Wilt is also generally observed on soy plants. A wilt turns the soy plant to brown and destroys plants completely. It is important to remove the affected plant immediately it is noticed in your soy farm. Pin bugs and foliage feeders bean flies, silver leaf white fly, and nematodes in soy plants. To control this pest, collect the worms from the plant and destroy the affected plants. Do not leave those worms around your farm. Spray insecticides. Continue visiting your farm in case you see erosion enter it or something else enter your farm. You control it until when your soybean is due for harvest. And how do you know that your soybean has reached physiological maturity? If you notice that 95%, 85 to 95% of your pods or your soybean plants, the pods are stone yellow, and you test the seed, you see that the seed is hard. That means your soybean is ready for harvest. Harvest. Depending on the variety, soybean can be harvested between 85 days and 150 days after planting. Soybean is harvested when the pods are full. It is harvested when about 85% of the pod is turned brown. Alternatively, soya bean can be harvested when the seed is hard or when its moisture content is between 14 and 16%. For late cultivation, by the end of October and November, leaves start to turn yellow and drop down to the field. The bean pods dry out very quickly because of rapid moisture loss from the seed. At that stage, beans are ready for harvest. The moisture content of seed while harvesting should be about 16%. Harvest beans by breaking the stalks on the ground level by hand or with a sickle. Threshing of seed should be done with the help of mechanical soya bean thresher. Harvested pots are dried under the sun and when they are properly dried, the seeds should be stored in jute bags. So what do you do? You come with either a machete or a siku or anything that you can cut the plant. Harvest your soybeans, look for a very good place, an open place that air will enter, then keep your soybean there. Leave it to dry for like two to three weeks, then you bring a treasure to come and trace your soybeans. But if you have a mechanical means of harvesting, what you do is you wait until 95% of your poles are ready, are dried for harvest. Then you bring your combined harvester, you go into your farm, harvest everything and package it for sale. Do not harvest your soybean by uprooting the entire plant. Because the rootstock that you are leaving in the soil will add nutrients to that soil for another cropping season. So if you uproot your soybean, that means you are removing the nutrients that would have been helpful for you for another cropping season, especially when you want to plant a seri crops like maize or millet or uh, Crop yield depends on the variety of seeds used for cultivation. However, a good crop management skill, proper care and more dedication towards a soya bean farm can lead to improved production system in soya beans.